going over a shark's diet research paper for Nahoa, a black tip reef shark. So, Nahoa is a black tip reef shark, which is 15 years old. He was originally kept at the Hilton Hotel, where he has been fed the same diet for his entire life. And once we acquired him, we fed him the same diet. So, problem statement is, wheel changing Nahoa's diet be beneficial to him. My hypothesis is when Noah's diet is changed, it will be beneficial to him and his feeding habits. My null hypothesis is the diet will not have any changes to his feeding habits or health at all. And my alternative hypoth hypothesis is when his diet is changed, it won't be good for him or his feeding habits. So going over some of my facts that we have here. So Noah has been fed frozen squid frozen mackerel and frozen shrimp now this is what we feed monday wednesday friday this is what he's mainly fed with the occasional live tilapia thrown in there once a week times um every other week if we don't get to it so most medium sized black tip reef sharks in hawaii eat about 78 percent of bony fish, and 22% of crustaceans. So right now, our focus should try to be on changing what the type of fish he is eating, since that is the main thing he eats most of the time, between the mackerel and squid. He usually has more mackerel by weight, I think, but he eats more pieces of squid. But the mackerel, we're trying to find a fish that supports good nutrients, proteins, and fats to feed him. That is sometimes live, it could also be frozen, but as long as we catch it off the island, it's fine if we freeze it. But what we were thinking about was the Hingalea or the Saddleback Grass. It's a really good, easy fish to catch out here, and a lot of medium sized sharks in our Hawaiian reefs eat Hingaleas, which Nahoa is a pretty medium sized shark. The frozen shrimp. So, in some of the studies here, 61 gray reef sharks stomachs were open and had an average of 1.6 shrimps in their stomach so that's hardly anything so i'm seeing as frozen ship shrimp shouldn't be something we feed at all instead we should be focusing on something they eat instead as that could be more of lobster or octopus as medium-sized sharks that have also had their stomachs go open had 29 to 32 percent of lobster in their diet but sadly lobster would not be able to be picked due to cost restraints so that's where our octopus could come in to replace the squid and the shrimp since octopus could fill up both of those gaps. And octopus is a very common thing to see out here in Hawaii as there's lots of spear fishermen selling it. And it usually goes between 5 to $7 a pound usually unless we can go out and catch it. So in the 61 degree sharks that had their stomachs open, there was 18 octopuses found among all the 61 groove sharks. And the sharks being fed around a half a pound to three quarters of a pound of squid. So I think that's a little more than the mackerel. But we would just replace that half pound to three quarters of a pound of squid with octopus. And then when we're trying to get our octopus, we won't do anything too small or else it wouldn't be worth the money or anything too big. As once they get too big, the nutrient nutritional value starts decreasing in them. Um, some of the small side sharks that they cut open during that experiment with the 61 grade sharks had 17% of cephalopods in their diet. So as of right now, fresh caught fish or live caught fish seem to be the best options for feeding Nahua. As when we've seen when we feed a live tilapia, he is much more intrigued having a live prey to actually go hunt. So that's actually good for his health. It is releasing chemicals into his body and brain that turn him into hunt mode, which I don't want to say keeps him young, but it keeps him more active than being in the shark tank right now, because right now he usually just moves in slow circles, especially when we feed him any of the frozen food. He's not really moving fast. He picks up his pace just a little, but it's nothing like a shark out in the wild where they're actually moving a lot. Everything that I've named off for food wise can be found here on the big island that we can go out and get. So a little side note, 
Some of the other things we found, um, puffer and porcupine fish were the most common bony fish found in three different types of tiger shark size classes. So small, medium, and large. That was the most bony fish found was puffer and porcupine, porcupine fish. There was very small amounts of puffer fish found inside of black tip and gray tip reef sharks, but these were very small amounts and it wouldn't be worth us going to get because it could potentially harm the shark and or us since Noho has a very small mouth so we have to find very small puffer fish. So for those 61 reef sharks, those were all caught by setting up long lines. And those long lines were used in three sections of 800 meter long lines that had 24 hooks per section. And this was to catch hundreds of sharks that were killed to open up their stomach contents. As a lot of these sharks were the great reef sharks, sandbar sharks, and Galapagos sharks, which are all found here on the Hawaiian Island chain. So as for sharks fasting, this is something we need to look into a little bit as well due to Noah's health, Noah's health, as he also does not eat. Um, sometimes he skips days he wants to eat. So feed him on Wednesday and Monday. Sometimes on Friday he won't eat. So that way on Monday he usually will be more hungry and he usually eats more food, causing him to either not be hungry on Wednesday or causing him to eat very little on Wednesday. But for the record for a shark fasting that was observed by us humans was a swell shark. Um, he didn't eat for 15 months. As for Noah, I don't think he's gone more than three days without eating, which is one week for him. One food week, I guess you could say, because we feed three times in a school week. As for the black tip and gray reef sharks, their main diet is crustaceans, which is lobsters mainly and small bony fish that live on the reefs. So as for some of the results and analysis that we've covered from experiments that we have conducted, due to time to first bite taken ratio for what food we are feeding. So Nahoa's fastest time for eating any food out there was 45 seconds. That's when he took his first bite out of said squid or mackerel, I'm not exactly sure what it was, but this was caused by him not eating two days prior. So if he didn't eat Monday or Wednesday on a Friday, he took his first bite and a total of 45 seconds of the food being in the water. And then the second time, we're looking at just over a minute here, I believe, and that was for a live feed. So when we had a live tilapia in the water, Noah's instincts kicked in and he went for that almost immediately. So the only problem when we first put a tilapia in there, he has to first be able to see it and sense it with his little electromagnetic sensors on his nose. And once he senses it and sees it, then he starts to hunt it down. So he hunted that one down really quick. As usually he goes on for about three to five minutes if he eats it. Because sometimes he just doesn't eat it at all. But for some of the longest times we've had him we feed for a maximum of 30 minutes. If he doesn't eat during that time, he does not get fed that day. So comparing um, non-live to live feeds was one of the big things. As we did have some data error comparing them to each other because we didn't do enough live feeds compared to non-live feeds during the school year. So that messed up a bunch of data for us to do. So we had 23 non-live feeds over the course of six months and two days. And they've only had seven live feeds during that time frame when we came to analyze our data. So by not having that, we weren't able to perform a proper t-test, but we were able to get averages out for the live feed and non-live feed. So live feed averages in seconds, by the way, were 310 seconds, 0.971. And for the non-live feed, it was 368.869 seconds. So seeing this, Nahoa is more intrigued during a live feed when prey is actually moving away from him, trying to get away, and he actually has to hunt and chase it down, causing him to move around more. And when he does get this fish, he's usually 
filled up for the next day as well, which is what I've come to notice as an observation when we throw in a slightly bigger tilapia than normal. So, showing that this small amount of data shows that he prefers to eat live prey over frozen food. But one thing I have seen is that it also, if we're feeding marlin or ahi that's been frozen, he will take the marlin and frozen ahi much faster than he will the mackerel, squid, or frozen shrimp. As I feel like these fish that we have out here, I feel like they are more intrigued on them, so it's something that's actually out here in the waters, as well as something that probably has more nutrients. I haven't looked into that as much yet, but I definitely will. But seeing that the averages were better for the live feed, that helps support my hypothesis just a little bit. But in conclusion, there wasn't really enough data to prove my hypothesis was correct exactly as I also didn't have an exact way to um, get his health data tracked. Um, we weren't really sure how to do that in the long-term effect, as we were originally going to do a t-test, but that doesn't really work good for over-time data. So as we did see, the life feed is technically faster for him, and the life feed we know for sure is more beneficial and nutritious for him, but there, is no, there isn't enough supporting data for this. So, as of right now, my hypothesis is neither correct nor incorrect as of this time. But as time goes on, I'm sure this can change.